Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Serp Bros. In this video, we're going to be talking about ARP poisoning. Before we start, I need to stress that this video is for informational purposes only. If you know how these attacks work, then you can better defend against them. Do not try this on any system that you do not own or have permission to do so. Okay, so before we dive into ARP poisoning, let's first remind ourselves how ARP works. So ARP or Address Resolution Protocol is used to discover MAC addresses and then map them to an associated IP address. The way this works is very simple. Let's say host A at the top wants to find the MAC address of the default gateway, which is 192.168.1.254. Host A will broadcast a message to the entire network, asking who is 192.168.1.254 and what is your MAC address? The message is sent to every device on the network. Host B sees this message realizes it's not for him, and he just discards it. The router, however, thinks, oh, that's me, and replies saying, here is my MAC address, and sends a reply to host A. Host A then stores this MAC address alongside the associated IP address for future use in the ARP cache. Now, if host A wants to send some data to this web server on the right, it simply sends it to the default gateway, which in our case is the router. From here, the router handles the rest. Now, if this looks unfamiliar to you, I have a video explaining this process in a bit more detail. So feel free to go and check that out. So that is how ARP is supposed to work. However, there are some flaws to this process. Let's say host B isn't Billy Bob from down the hall. He's actually an evil hacker trying to steal our information. The hacker can send specifically crafted ARP messages to our host, pretending to be the default gateway. The idea is to poison host A's ARP cache and trick it into listing the hacker's address as the default gateway. So in this case, host A replaces the MAC address for the default gateway with the MAC address of our evil hacker. Now, if host A again wants to send some data to the web server, he's going to look up the MAC address in his ARP cache. The data will be sent to the switch just like before. But this time, the data is not sent to our router. It's sent to the evil hacker instead. The hacker can now do all the snooping he wants on the data before sending it to the real default gateway. This attack is known as a man in the middle attack. It's where the attacker places himself in between, or in the middle, of the victim and whichever system is trying to access. If successful, the hacker can inspect everything that is happening while the victim is none the wiser. So that was the theory. Now let's see this in action. Here is our victim's computer. Before we do anything, let's just check a few things. If I go to start, then type PowerShell. Move this into the center so we can all see. First, let's check the IP address and the default gateway. To do this, we'll type IP config. Here we can see the IP address of this machine, which is 192.168.1.1, and our default gateway is 192.168.1.254. Next, I'm going to check the ARP cache by typing ARP-A. Here we can see the default gateway's IP address and the associated MAC address. So everything is working as it should. Let's now introduce our hacker's machine. This is Kali Linux. Kali is a Linux distribution used for penetration testing or ethical hacking. Don't worry if you're not familiar with Linux, you can still follow along to get the idea. The first thing I'm going to do is open the terminal. And just like with our victim, I'm going to check the IP address by typing ifconfig. As we can see, this machine has an IP address of 192.168.1.2. .1 .2. 
We can also see the MAC address here. Take a mental note of this. Remember, it ends in D6. So now I'm going to open the menu, go down to Sniffing and Spoofing, then select Etikap. I just need to enter the root password and then click Authenticate. And I'll open this full screen. OK, so this is Etikap, and this is the program we're going to use to carry out our attack. The first thing we need to do is select our primary interface. If zero is correct, so I'll leave it selected. Hit the tick button and Etikap will start up. So now we need to find our targets. The way we do this is by going to the three dots at the top of the screen, select hosts and scan for hosts. Now it's going to scan for active hosts in my network. We can see it found two active hosts. To list the hosts, we just need to go back to the three dots, hosts, and then host list. We can see it has found 192.168.1.1, which will be our victim, and 192.168.1.254, which is our router. I'll first select our victim computer and add it to target one. But for this attack to work, we also need to trick the router into sending the traffic back to us and not to the real sender. So we select our router and add it to target two. Now we need to select the man in the middle menu that looks like a little globe and choose our attack. There are a few different options here, but the one we want is ARP poisoning. Once selected, you can see at the bottom that it has started the attack. While that's running, I'm just going to open a program called Wireshark so we can capture some traffic. I'll select the interface and then hit Start Capture. Back to our victim's computer. Nothing out of the ordinary seems to be happening here. But if I open Wireshark on this computer, Start Capture, we should start to see some strange ARP messages. We can make this easier to see by typing ARP in the filter box at the top of the screen. Now if we wait for a few seconds, we should start to see those ARP messages claiming to be from the router on 192.168.1.254. But on closer inspection, we can see the sender's IP address is the router, but the sender's MAC address is in fact the address of our Kali Linux machine. Remember, it ends in D6. This is how we trick our victim, forcing them to update their ARP cache to use our MAC address instead of the real one. To see the effect this is having, let's close Wireshark and go back to PowerShell. If I type ARP-A again, we will see the MAC address for the default gateway has now changed to our attacker's address. Remember, D6. OK, so now let's pretend we are the unsuspecting user. We open up our web browser and we browse to a website that is running HTTP. and we'll just use this basic WordPress site. Because this site is using HTTP, this means all traffic is sent unencrypted. Let's click Login, enter our username, then our password, and we're logged in. Nothing unusual happened, right? If we open our Wireshark capture again, and this time filtered by the website IP address by typing IP address equals equals 10.10.10.10. .10 Take a look at the destination MAC address. Does that look familiar to you? It's the MAC address of our Kali machine. This means all of the website traffic is being passed to the attacker. Let's go back to our attacker's machine one more time. We are still capturing traffic from before. What we can see here is all of the traffic between our victim's machine and the web server. We are simply intercepting it. This means we can snoop through all of the data that is being sent. For example, I happen to know that WordPress login requests contain the field PWD. So if I use the filter frame contains PWD, we should see the post request. If we then take a look at the HTML data, we can see our login credentials that have been sent in plain text. Now, if you don't fancy searching through huge amounts of packets, 
then luckily EdgeCap does a great job of extracting these credentials for us. So that is how we can poison an app cache and trick a victim into sending us their data. Then we can extract passwords, files, and other confidential information. And that's pretty scary, right? The good news is that this type of attack is nowhere near as dangerous as it once was. The attack requires the data to be sent in clear text. Protocols such as HTTP, FTP, and Telnet that use plain text have all been replaced with much more secure methods. It's a prime example of why you shouldn't use insecure protocols. It's safe to say that 90% of traffic being sent over a network is now encrypted, making this attack largely useless. That said, there are steps we can take to prevent this type of attack from happening in the first place. In particular, dynamic ARP inspection, also known as DAI, is more than capable of stopping this type of attack in a corporate network. Once again, this video is for informational purposes only. The more aware you are, the more secure you can be. Do not try this attack on any systems that you do not own or have permission to do so. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really does help this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.